How's it going? You alright? Ricky, outdoor adventure. And Billy, who's down here, just coming up to the Lord Billy. You good lad. He always comes to say hello when I start talking to the camera. So, how's it going anyway? Hope you're all alright. And uh, we're out in the forest again, as usual. <clears throat> and uh, first thing tonight, it's going to be a midge fest, I've no doubt about it. So, first thing tonight is to give us a little bit of midge protection. So, I'll show you a dead easy way to protect yourself from the midges. I've done videos before on uh, birch polypore, which is a good fungi. I'll put a link to a video up here. So if you watch that one, it'll tell you all the uses of birch polypore. Yep, some edible uses and a few good other uses that are really good and that I've used them all, I would think. Yeah, I definitely have. I've used them all in the past. I still use it all the time to sharpen my knives. Uh, I've used them for the plasters. I've used them to eat. I've used them, etc., etc. But I'll show you another good use tonight that's going to protect us from the midges. So all I've done is I've cut a sapling. Yeah, so I've cut this sapling. It's about thumb thickness. You can go a little bit thicker. You can make do thinner if you wanted. There's a million ways you can do this. But I'll show you the way I do it. And we're going to set up a little bit of a, a barrier to keep the little blighters away. Yeah, right. Stick with us. First job, let's get the pack off and get ourselves a bit more set up. I'm not going to need much for this job, so basically just my knife and that'll do us. To make things easy to see, I'm going to put this ground cloth down. This is a great bit of kit this. This is made by uh, my cousin, Simon Erdley, and uh, it's waterproof, I use it for loads of things. I use it for uh, putting Billy on in the tent so his claws don't puncture the bottom of my tent. I use it for sitting on, I use it for laying my food out on, I use it for making chairs out of, I use it for loads and loads of things. It's just a dead handy piece of kit. Simon's got an Etsy store so if any of you are interested in any of his kit, I'll put a link in the description and uh, if you have a look down there you'll be able to find it. Have a look what he's got. He does some lovely bags and all sorts of stuff. And if you're into camera stuff he does lots of kit for wildlife photography. But yeah, it's a good bit of kit so I can lay my gear out in here and you'll be able to see what I'm doing. So basically I'm going to want three lengths. So you know you could have you could have each length six foot long if you wanted. But I'm going to be I'm going to be down near the ground. Yep. Come on, Billy's going to sit right up the middle of my work surface. I'm going to be down near the ground. Yep. Doing what I'm doing tonight. So I'm not too bothered about too much height. Foot and half will do me. That man, out of the way, Billy. Come on, out of the way. Good lad. So I'm going to cut this into about a foot and half. Somewhere like somewhere like that. It's about right. Could easily use it, use your saw. I'm just going to beaver chew through this one. Beaver chew one way, spin it round. Going to beaver chew the other side. That'll do the job. Snap that. That's got me one piece. I'll just make that a bit fluffier. It's a bit nicer. That's one piece. I'll sharpen the other end. So 
sorted. The same again with another piece. So I've got three pieces, a point on the end of each. All I'm going to do, this top one here, it's a bit thicker. I'm going to split that. One. I'm going to split it two ways. Yeah, that's that one. Good boy, good boy, good boy, good boy. Once I've got these three pieces cut, these are going to be my torches. I've got a piece of birch polypore. Yeah, that's just a piece that I've had for a while. Yeah, that I've. Uh, gathered a while back or forage for etc and uh, I made a nice drop out of that and this is what's left of the nice drop so I'm going to cut three sections of that long square sections a bit like a chip One, two. Now, that's simple. All we're going to do is we're going to use that to trap the end of our chip. The end of our uh, bit of birch polypore. Simple as that. That's one. The thinner ones, these are green saplings, so they've got a bit of spring in them. Number two, number three, dead easy. There were torches. Now all we have to do is light them. Now if you had a fire going, this would be easier. I'm gonna get that burning. Now that's going to smoulder and give off that little bit of smoke. Now that smoke will keep the midges away. That's one. Three. There we are, natural midge repellent. Better in it, Billy. And it really works as long as you get them in the right positions so the smoke's wafting over you and the aroma, it does the job.
You might have to change them if the wind changes direction during the night. But it makes a difference. For what? Five minutes work. So yeah, so thanks for joining us for that short video on keeping the midges down and what you can do and uh, look after yourselves from Rick and Billy. We're out for night, but uh, we'll catch you again real soon. All right, see you later. Cheddar.